Hey guys, it's ESPN001 here for part number 10 of Let's Play Destroy All Humans 2 to 100% on the PS4. Last time we completed one odd job, so not a whole lot of progress. And we... Uh, no, wait, it was an episode before that we accidentally collected a Furitech cell. Oh, and we died for the first time and completed a lot of gene blends, so fairly productive episode, but still died once, which was embarrassing, but... I mean, this is not the easiest game in the world. I've talked about that before, that it's it's really not the easiest game out there. And I would say that in terms of 100%ing it, it's probably going to be the hardest. Just because with Destroy All Humans 1, there's less that you have to do and there's less that you have to collect. Plus, with Destroy All Humans 1, you can use cheats. Uh, with this one, there's no cheats. Not that I can, not that I know of. I don't think there were any cheats with it. I know there aren't on the PS4 version, though. And then Big Willy Unleashed is fairly check, easy Ponzi. compared to these other games. And then Path to Furon's even easier. So, yeah. This ain't just a social call, is it? I'm afraid not. I'm relieved to see you, sir. The Soviets appear to be up to some mischief. What kind of mischief are we talking about? Because uh, if she says she's 18, you can't just call her a liar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the Soviet ambassador is throwing a party for the opening of an exhibit of Russian modern art. Frankly, it's making me a bit nervous. A number of Albion's VIPs are in attendance. Ah, uh, so, what are we gonna do what, then? You want me to get over there, rough the ambassador up a little? Dear Lord, no. I just need you to mingle with the crowd and check it out, incognito as it were. Okay, I'll get a disguise. Wouldn't want my pretty mug to ruin anybody's appetite. Uh, let's joke about modern art. There's plenty to joke about so, in today's modern art. Modern art, huh? Jackson Pollock pees on a canvas and sells it for 50 grand. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> oh, you're serious? Well, I suppose it takes something of an educated eye to make sense of it. Educated eye? What a crock! I don't need a master's in art history to know what I like. No, no, of course not. But as modern art has become more abstracted, it helps to understand the conceptual framework the artist had in mind. You realize the player's in the kitchen making nachos at this point, right? Well, you did that whole Blue Rider thing in the first game. I, I just thought perhaps... I know, I know. Lead Balloon City. What are you gonna do? Okay, I don't know what he means by that part of the first game, because it's been a while since I played the first game, like a few months. But, yeah, that's literally hilarious. They make fun of the actual, like, the first game there. And they make fun of the player. Yeah, the player is making nachos right now. I love nachos, if they're with the right kind of cheese, that is. Then again, most cheese is good cheese. Anyway... This mission, La Femme Natalia. This is an important mission because this is going to introduce a major character into the game. And one that is, I would say, a big favorite of the franchise. So yeah, that's kind of funny though. He's making fun of the first game like that and they make fun of modern art. I agree, modern art is so freaking stupid, it's not even funny. I mean, modern art is literally like, as Chugga Conroy has always said, you can literally throw nacho cheese on the wall and it sells for millions of dollars. So, what is happening here? Oh, that's not good, is it? That's probably very not good. Who is this? You want, spaceman, but you're only treating the symptoms. You want to get the disease, you have to shoot the spores. Let's throw ya! Okay then, guys. That is the introduction of Natalia. Ah, uh, so to kill these guys, you can use the anal probe, but oftentimes the easier thing to do is literally just to pound them with a disintegrator ray. Later on in the game, we're gonna get better. We're gonna have this thing upgraded to where it'll kill infected humans in like 10 shots or less. So really, they aren't that big a threat. You just continuously shoot them with the disintegrator ray. It's the easiest way to take them out in my opinion. 
a little bit faster that way. Natalia can't die here either, which is good. And don't get used to it, because that's not how the rest of the game's gonna go at all. Thanks, Cupcake. Always nice to meet a chick who can handle her guns. You got a name? The name is Natalia. I'm here to help you, Spaceman. Or do you prefer Mr. President? Mr. What the? Does everybody I on this dismal knows. freaking island know who I am? Da, pretty much. At least everyone in my line of work. So who do you work for? Oh, so you work for Ponzenby? Yet. Although after this little incident, I may have to ask him for a job. I work for the Komatet Gosu Darstvenoi Bezupesnosti. Why, you make pasta? <laughs> I'm a secret agent with the KGB. Okay, so pretty much every time you talk to Natalia, you can make some kind of lewd or sexual comment. And we're going to go through all of them, guys, because there's some actually really funny ones in here. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't, like, affect the way the game plays or anything. It's just, uh, extra dialogue. You have to go through all the options. You have to go through the main option eventually anyway. So you're a secret agent, huh? Because I got a package <laughs> that needs delivering. Your eyes only, big. What a way to start. I have three knives hidden on my body, and I'm blindingly lethal with all of them. Now concentrate. Ooh. I think I'm in love. That's great. That's literally great. I mean, honestly, that's hilarious. And there's so much of it in the game. Hmm. What the hell do you think was in those statues? Hard to say. It's listed in official documents as Goshniev Kro. Sounds tasty. Hmm. It loosely translates as either an incredibly lethal biological weapon or a quasi-legal performance enhancer for the Soviet Olympic team, depending on the context. <laughs> so, what is it? Some kind of mutagen? Because I don't know what mutants are supposed to look like, but... Actually, no. It's a spore. It infects a host through inhalation or skin contact. But after a brief incubation period, it seems to set about genetically rebuilding the victim into something... Not human. You think somebody engineered it for the purpose? You have a better explanation? I'm just trying to put all the pieces together. At first, I thought it was being made here, but now I am not so sure. Well, all right then. Moy, the schedule's been moved up. They're about to shower these abominable spores all over the city. You take the Hyde Park infestation. I'll handle the ones in Soho. And Spaceman, good hunting. All right, then. So, our next goal, we have to defeat the infected humans throughout Hyde Park. Now, actually, if you have missions like this, there's a nice strategy you can use. Try to kill all the humans before the spore drums detonate. If you can kill them before the spore drums detonate, then they actually will not end up getting infected. Like, you'll kill them to where they won't be able to turn into infected humans is what I'm trying to get at. So that's the safest way to do this, and probably the easiest. Uh... So you want to take out the spores. Oftentimes I feel like the Zapomatic works a little bit better for the spores than the disintegrator ray, but that's just sort of the way I've found it to be. I don't know if that's entirely true or not. But you can use either weapon that you want. It doesn't really matter. You're not going to be seeing these things all that much after this first, after this area. Like at least the spores. You'll still see some infected humans though occasionally. They aren't particularly common throughout the course of the game though. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can kill them all you want. It's not going to fail the mission, not going to fail the objective or anything, so it's not a big deal. I don't know why they have to uh, push that objective on you. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, it looks like over here we have one or two real infected humans. Uh, 
Their attacks do quite a bit of damage, so you definitely want to try to avoid them. Like, as you can see there, they take out about a quarter of your health, so... Be safe and, uh, careful with it, so, yeah. Alright, let's head over there. But yeah, this is the safest way to take out, uh, enemies in this kind of a situation. But later on, oftentimes, there won't be any spore drums and the humans will just already be infected. Like, right here. Uh, also, one thing that sucks about fighting infected humans is that unlike most enemies, they are not slowed by the Zapomatic. As you can see here, if I can actually hit him, yep, they are not slowed at all by the Zapomatic, so that's very unfortunate. And also, it seems like when you hit him with the Zapomatic, it makes the spores come out a little more often. Stop them, Cryptosporidium! Help me, Stoopy Cryptoby137, or whatever Pox called him in uh, Big Willy Unleashed. You're my only hope. Uh, one of these gates has a data core on top of it. It's really hard. It's like, it's pretty much impossible to get, though, unless you have the fully upgraded chet pack. It's very, very difficult to get without the fully upgraded we chet pack. I think you can get to it if you use some clever jumping and some glitching through, like, trees and buildings and stuff. So I want to say you can do it that way, but it's a little bit tougher that way, so... Uh, let's go ahead and transmog this car, though. Let's get some more ammo. But yeah, it, I think it is possible to get to most of the collectibles in the game without a fully upgraded jetpack if you use some clever jumping and glitches, but I'm not entirely sure you can. It's just a lot better to wait until you have the fully upgraded jetpack to get most of them. So this is the one that has the uh, data core on it. Sorry, police officer, I didn't mean to kill you there, but you stood in my way, so couldn't help it. And they're dead. Perfect. Splendid job, sir. A tour de force, if I may. But you best make a quicker exit. I expect the constabulary will be arriving shortly to investigate. Well, Probably. I'll be in touch. End of line. Fire, isn't she? Uh. Yes, she is. We're going to see if we can get our up to it. Because sometimes trees and buildings in this game will have, like, sort of an invisible, uh, like, floor on them that you can stand on. It's glitchy and it's kind of random to know if they're going to work at any given time or not. But it is a way to get to a lot of items. A lot of trees have these sort of invisible floors to them. Uh, but it looks like it's not going to work too well here, so can't seem to get one to pop here. Also, if you were to have, like, a double-decker bus, you might be able... Okay, let's uh, do this so I don't die here. But also, if you were to have, like, a double-decker bus, you might also be able to get up there because the double-decker buses are pretty tall. So, yeah, you probably could find a way up there without the fully upgraded jetpack. Yep, there it is. There it is, guys. There was that invisible ledge. So, yeah, if you're lucky enough to hit an invisible ledge, it can make it possible to reach things that you normally should not be able to reach. Such as that data core. Uh, I don't like the anti-gravity field, though. I find it to be pretty useless. But yeah, if you're lucky, you can manage to find an invisible ledge inside of a tree or on the side of a building. And doing so can make your job quite a bit easier. Well, not necessarily easier, but it just allows you to do things earlier in the game than you would normally be allowed to do. So that's pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, good thing to know, I suppose. And we're going to activate this Arvoodle statue. I demand Arvoodle, Arvoodle, woo! Those youths keep tapping out the sacred herb pipes upon my holy, if indestructible, image. Appease my righteous fury by destroying several of their number. I can do that. So they want us to kill hippies with pleasure. Don't worry, Arkvoodle, I love killing the hippies, because it's easy, because they have, like, no health. One more somewhere. Uh, where are we going to find the last one? They can respawn pretty quickly at times, too, which is nice. Uh, see if we can find one more. Yeah, Hyde Park's about the best place to find hippies in this area, just because it's very often full of them. I think that's an urban, and I just heard my dog barking. I don't know what that was about. 
This shall serve as a lesson to all them. Alright, so we got it. That was pretty easy. Now summon thy sky chariot from this location. Yeah, my dogs are barking. That's unfortunate. Okay. Well, guys, there wasn't really that much more we could do in a reasonable amount of time in this video, given that the next story mission is one of the longest and toughest in the entire game. So, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I will see you guys next time.